folks, Garrett here. Got another review, and uh, thank you, Clint, for the intro. Um, we are doing a little collaboration, looking at the uh, Henkai Mirage and the Henkai um, Electro Disruptor Liger figures. Um, I'm not going to do background on the character, but um, the thing that I thought was interesting to kind of research on this character was the name. Um, Electro Disruptor Liger. Now, um, the first part, Electro Disruptor, I always thought was kind of a strange, um, strange for naming uh, this particular character, until I discovered that, um, well, his main weapon, that uh, the one that sits on his shoulder, which is listed as a rocket launcher, but it's also listed as an Electro Disruptor. It has an Electro Disruptor feature on it. And that is the weapon that... Mirage, Liger, Raiji, whatever, all the different pronunciations for this character, uh, uses to turn himself invisible. It, it charges the particles or charges, uh, you know, around him to reflect light and turn himself invisible. So the Electro Disruptor part is coming from the, the act or the, you know, the weapon, the device that actually turns him invisible. Now the Liger part, um, he is patterned off of, uh, uh, of the original Mirage. It was patterned off of the Liger JS11 F1 Racer, which, um, you know, I know some of this because my dad's a big fan of uh, racing, all the types of racing. Not really NASCAR, but a lot of the F1 racing and that sort of stuff. Um, you know, now the, the Liger team um, or manufacturing, it was a racing team during the 70s, early 80s. Um, and the JS11 Liger was their race car. Um, and, it, you know, the company was started by a Frenchman, uh, Guy Liger, or Liger. And I'm kind of thinking because he's French, perhaps it should be pronounced Liger. I'm, I'm really not entirely sure. Um, but, um, anyways, looking at that kind of history, uh, we also, um, well, we'll get to the 26 here in just a second. Let's go take a look at okay. this figure. Liger, Electro Disruptor Liger in his F1 Racer. Now this this mode is not patterned off of any particular F1 Racer now or any maker model. It's just a generic racer, kind of a futuristic version. Um, this mode is devoid of any sort of racing logos like the like Mirage, like the Classics Mirage was. Um, the only real logo on this is the 26, which by the way, the original real F1 Racer the JS11 racer back in the 70s and 80s, that is the number that usually, 25 and 26 were the numbers that usually um, they raced with. So um, they kept the nostalgia 26. Um, you do have the 26 here and an Autobot logo there. In this mode, there is very little paint. You have some silver paint up here on the front axles, on the front part of the, the fuselage here. A little bit of silver paint on the side and top of the uh, canopy, the little cockpit here. A little bit of silver paint there. It does have the chrome, the typical Henkai chrome here and here. And a few little black paint apps just to kind of bring out some details down there. Uh, the rest of this is all either, um, oh, well, oh, I forgot. There's silver paint on the hubcaps. Uh, but the rest of this is either this a little bit of this clear, kind of crystal clear plastic or a smoky gray translucent plastic here. Mostly in this mode is that translucent gray. Uh, when we get them to robot mode, um, this is very well dispersed throughout the figure and kind of disappears and the majority of the figure is that crystal clear plastic. In fact, if we look on the bottom, we can see um, the nice thing about this mold is there's not really any robot part showing at all. The head is very well hidden but you can see there's a lot more crystal clear plastic to come after the transformation. And there is some white opaque plastic, which I was talking um, to uh, Mind Zombie last night, in fact, and I think, well, I'll tell you my theory about why we have that plastic included. So uh, we're just gonna transform him fairly quickly, take off his weapon. It's going to, uh, it tells you to flip this little panel up. I'm not sure why. It all comes apart just fine, even without doing that. Just gonna disconnect his and separate his legs, and these are just gonna fold down like so, fold down like so. 
I was kind of rushing this um, transformation because we've seen this transformation many times. Uh, his arms are right here. You're just going to lift up and out, down like so, lift up and down. Then this piece right here is going to, if you hold this in place, it's just going to flip like so. And the front end of the cockpit is going to come down, revealing his head. Of course, I need to rotate his arms a little bit more to get them out of the way to transform the rest of this chest section. There we go. Now, for those of you that watched my other videos, buyer beware videos on this, this is fixed. Took me quite a while to fix it, but and uh, a lot of sweat and uh, aggravation, but uh, it is taken care of and works just fine. Just kind of straighten out his arms. One thing I have noticed about this figure is some of his joints are quite a bit fiddlier or loose than um, most of the other versions of this mold, uh, probably because of that plastic. I'm not sure, but I mean, once you get him into position, he pretty much stays where you want him. So you can see in this mode, there's a lot more of the crystal clear plastic showing than there was in the vehicle mode. You have a few more paint applications here, these uh, black and red stripe here. And then this uh, black and red here on the chest. Uh, the head is painted black and silver. No white piping on this one. Uh, but it's still, uh, this figure has a really nice head sculpt. It took me a long time to, uh, to enjoy this figure, or to enjoy this mold, but uh, I really like it now. Um, stands pretty well. If I flip them around, though, I want to talk about quickly about that uh, white plastic, the, the non-transparent that's used here and here. Here at the waist, here at the elbows, and then these little ball joints up underneath the shoulder. And I was kind of talking to uh, Mind Zombie about it last night, and uh, because we were looking at the pictures of uh, the Ghost of Starscream Henkai figure, which should be shipping to me soon, so I'll have that one to to review soon. Um, we were trying to look at the non-translucent plastic, and I'm thinking I've noticed the non-translucent plastic. Sometimes this translucent plastic can be a little brittle a little weak that uh, that non-translucent plastics mainly used on the joints and I'm thinking perhaps that plastics just a little more resilient to those moving um, those moving points on the figure maybe that's why they use them not entirely sure but uh, of course here's his his weapon which is okay I mean it's kind of it's kind of goofy looking to have these little fins on the side of the gun I need to get that uh, Gears of War set that has the weapon that mounts up there on the shoulder um, but um, it is a gorgeous figure. Yes, it was a pricey figure, you know, but um, as I've said before, if, if there's something that you want, just, you know, save your pennies. Save your pennies and get it. Don't be embarrassed or feel bad about picking up an expensive figure like this. If, if you save your money so that you can afford getting it because you really want it. Um, you know, I didn't get this because it was limited or exclusive. You know, I got this because I love this mold. Is such a gorgeous mold um, you know I'm, I'm still working on getting the rest of the versions of this mold um, but um, yeah I you know say if, if you like this mold as much as I do I can't recommend them enough so um, just pray that you don't have the glue the super glue problem that I had but um, anyways big thumbs up thank you guys for watching we'll talk to you later goodbye Oh, hey, and I almost forgot forgot to show you the packaging for this guy. He comes in the traditional Henkai packaging, monochromatic. Uh, this one being just um, black and white and grays to fit with the color scheme of the figure. Um, I This is another one. I, I don't want to get into a thing about packaging, but I really think Hasbro could learn a lot from Takara's packaging on their Henkai figures. I still think that there's some wasted packaging here, but nowhere near as much as Hasbro. Love this packaging, and it's so much easier just to slip a little tape, slide the card out, slide it back in so you can keep it in the box if you want to. Uh, very nice packaging. So, uh, anyways, need to add that in. Again, thank you all for watching. We'll talk to you later. Goodbye.